Tanner's Gym with RV with the Tanners. And today I'm going to show you how to wire a transfer switch into your RV so that you could use an alternate power source to provide AC to your trailer, such as a generator or an inverter, which supplies AC from your batteries. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is kind of just to get an example. So this hose spigot is kind of like an inverter, if you will. So from your house, you have the water going in and out you could go and wash your car with one hose and you could water the lawn with a second. So a transfer switch is going to be just the opposite of that. So you would have shore power coming in, like from your house or from the campground, and then you'd have your alternate power coming in here, uh, like your generator again, or your inverter. And then out of the transfer switch would go to your distribution panel in your RV, and it would power your RV like, gen like you normally would. A couple of things you're gonna need to make this project successful is a nice pair of cable cutters. I picked these up from Amazon for about 16 bucks, and they do a great job of cutting through the six gauge wire that you need in order to wire this uh, transfer switch because it has 50 amps of power running through it. Uh, the transfer switch that we're gonna actually show you, uh, I'll do it in a minute, uh, is from GoPower. Uh, they were very nice to supply this for me, so kudos to them. The model number is TS-50. I'll put a link down below so you can take a look at that as well from Amazon. The next thing you're gonna need to buy yourself is quality cable. Uh, I picked this up on Amazon. It's a six gauge wire. Again, so you can see how thick this is. Uh, it has four wires inside, uh, one for uh, po one pop power, one for second power, and then your ground and then neutral. Um, again, it's a pretty thick wire and that's why I recommend the, he the heavy duty cable cutter. Um, don't try to chimp out on the, the cable. This is very important because you're pushing 50 amps of power through this. Uh, you're gonna need a nice cable, they're pretty rigid. So uh, do your research and buy a, a pretty good cable. The last thing you're gonna need is a, a low cost item. I got three of these from Home Depot. They were $1.50 each. I'll put a link down below. Um, basically what this does is it connects itself to the transfer switch and there's, it serves two functions. One is the, when the cable goes in and you clamp it down, it keeps this, the cable in place. In case something should get nudged or something along the way, uh, the wire wouldn't get pulled off of the transfer switch. The other thing it does is keeps the cable secure so it doesn't get nicked on the uh, transfer switch. They're made out of uh, metal, so it's a good thing to do to keep the cable nice and protected. Uh, next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a tops down view of the transfer switch itself, and we'll walk you here through the uh, wiring of that. All right, so what we're looking at now is the back view of the transfer switch. Uh, on the, this side is where the AC power comes in from your shore power, as always, like you'd have a standard connection. The one on the left here is where you actually would bring in your alternate power, again, from either a generator or an inverter. So the cable would come in and do the connection. On the front side of the box is where the actual cable goes out to the, the distribution panel of your RV. So this is where the AC would flow out to the distribution panel on your RV. So here's the tops down view of the transfer switch. The way I did it was I had the main power run to the circuit breaker first, and then I ran the line in. So you, what you do is you're gonna take the line off of your circuit breaker, and then it's gonna kind of wrap around and come back in the, the transfer switch port on the back side. This is where the AC power comes in. So typically that would have gone to your circuit breaker from your main power line in, uh, but what you do is you disconnect that from your main circuit breaker, and then you're gonna bring that line into the first port on the transfer switch and connect it here, and I'll show you the wires in just a moment. Then you replace that with a secondary wire that you buy, and then we're gonna connect it up to the transfer switch here. Uh, so this is leg one of the power, and then you connect it up to leg one here. Uh, the neutral goes in the middle, and then your leg two, sometimes called L2, uh, goes on the third, and then your final wire here, your, your uh, ground wire, will come over to the side, and you'll connect it to the terminal on the transfer case itself. The case itself has a wire that come, come in from the other side, and we'll show you that in a moment. And then it does all the grounding uh, off this bus bar itself. Um, I'm not going to connect them here just for the sake of the video. I'm just going to make it easy for you to see where they go. Again, you have your leg one, your neutral, and then leg two. This power goes out to your distribution panel in your RV itself. All right, so now that we've talked how to take the power out of the transfer switch to the distribution panel, we're going to talk about the last bit of connections here. So the connection you're looking at in the lower part is the cable coming in from your shore power. So this is again 50 amps of service, it could be 220, it could be 110. Uh, so there's two legs of power, that's how you get to the 220. Um, they're not connected here and I know I've cut these cables a little long so don't comment on that, okay? Uh, but basically here's your L1, your neutral, and then your L2 power. And then down here below I've just left the 
the ground unhooked just for the sake of the video to try to make this a little bit cleaner on the inside. Um, so don't call me out on not having my uh, ground hooked up. And then finally, here's where your alternate power will be coming in. In my case, we're talking about a, an inverter, which creates the AC from 12 volt batteries. And the reason I'm calling this out specifically is because this is only uh, 110 power. And you'll notice that when the wires have changed colors. So now we only have two or one leg of power. So we've got the power coming in on the black, and we've got the neutral coming in, and now we're missing that second leg, which would make it the 220. I've brought over the ground over to the side just to kind of, again, make it clean for you guys to understand what's going on here. One trick that I talked with GoPower on in order to get, you, if you're using an inverter, to light up both circuits, so if you're kind of fooling the system into thinking you have 220, but it's realistically 110 on each leg, is you take a cable like this, and then you're going to jumper it. So you would go from L1 over to L3, and now your distribution panel is going to see power on both legs. Uh, again, this is approved by GoPower. I've talked to their technical support. It's, it's a, definitely a viable solution. So now you get the 110 power on both legs, and everything in your RV would light up. Um, again, with any kind of thing like this, uh, you're probably not going to be able to run your AC, your, your uh, you know, air conditioning unit, uh, but everything else in our system works fine. Microwave, uh, hair dryers, uh, plugging in computers, everything fine. Um, again, so this cable obviously is, is too big, but what you want to do is just sneak this down underneath, get a smaller cable, and again, connect from L1 over to L3 in order to get both of the uh, legs powered so all of your panels uh, are powered up in your distribution panel and then again all uh, outlets and anything in your trailer works again except for air conditioning all right so the last thing i want to talk about is how the power flows through this to your converter so in a normal situation if you're plugged into the campgrounds power you're just going to be coming through the bottom here directly through the transfer switch and then out of the transfer switch to the distribution panel your distribution panel then sends AC power to the converter, which obviously converts AC to DC power, and that charges your batteries, and everything is working great in, in a good world. The one situation where it's uh, lined up here is when you're actually using your inverter, which takes DC power off your batteries, converts it to AC power, it's going to come through here, and then it's going to be electricity now, 110, through here, back to your distribution panel, and then the same circuit is done again. So it goes through your distribution panel, through your converter, and charges the batteries. So this is known as an infinite loop. So basically you're going around and around each other, um, converting it to AC, going back through the converter to DC to your batteries, converting it back to AC. So one way to avoid this is if you're on your inverter, you can uh, turn off your converter at that time so it doesn't charge your batteries because there's no reason to be charging your batteries because you're using your batteries. So in this situation, what you can do is flip the circuit breaker on your distribution panel to turn your converter off. And then you're not wasting power trying to convert to AC, back to DC, convert to AC, back to DC. It's just an infinite loop. All right, well, that is about a wrap here. Uh, we showed you how to wire the transfer switch for your RV. Uh, again, down below is all the information on the products we used today. Uh, if you find that helpful, please hit the subscribe button or the uh, thumbs up. It's pretty nice to have those on our webpage. Uh, again, we're RV with the Tanners. I'm Jim. I'm Melinda, and thanks for watching. Bye.